Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome again. This is going to be, I think this was the second match with Nikolai. This is from the private game series, okay? So high level games against a couple of friends of mine. We gathered together so I could record high level matches for you guys because they are really good survivors and you can't really get matches like this on pubs. It's extremely rare. So we just decided to do it on private game so I could record it for you guys. So you guys can see how it's played. How the builds that I usually show, you know, I make videos of play at high level. So I'm using the uh, the best build for Nikolai here that I made. I already have the videos for all my builds that I use in these videos. So if you guys ever want to check the playlist, I, you can probably find there how to a playlist for each mastermind with the builds and everything. Um, for the private games, I have a at the end of the video a, a link to it as well. If you guys can see the big square there at the end of the video to the playlist of the private games. So, as I mentioned already in the build video, I use the syringes mostly for the second area and forward, so I can get the shield. So, this is this map in particular, you know, at the start right there, you can easily, usually get a few easy shots, waste a little bit of time. Uh, Nikolai is good, because he, he's really good at wasting time, you know, with the guns and everything. Uh, especially because you can, you can leave before they destroy the camera, so they don't they don't even get the 20 seconds. You're constantly just eating their time away. You see, she's smart. She knows. Uh, as soon as I turn the camera, you can tell she's already started to dodge it. <laughs> That's some real, like really uh, interesting dodge moves right there. <laughs> uh, this guy Paulo is really good. I uh, I really like him. He's a really good player. I would expect nothing less from him. So as you can tell right there, also if you don't know, like there as you can tell, if you're shooting them with the camera, they cannot actively shoot you back, if you don't know that. Unless this happens, if they start shooting with the, the machine gun, then it's the opposite, you cannot shoot back, <laughs> you know? But it's the same thing, if you shoot them with the gun, the same effect that you saw there with the machine gun happens, but with them. They cannot shoot your camera back as they're getting hit. So even so, if you see them try to aim your camera, you can actually stop that by literally just shooting them with the machine gun in particular because it's constant fire, so they won't be able to shoot back. So you see right there, they were pretty fast, but uh, I'm just trying to eat uh, as much time as I could here. They forgot one key there. <laughs> they uh, probably didn't realize they only have two, so they would still have to come back. In my head, I'm thinking that's a good thing, right? Because now, now I would be, I'll have enough time to to waste more of that time. Eat more of their time away. So there goes my shield is back. I should have used that a little bit earlier there. I took a little too long. Otherwise, I, I could have uh, shot the the um, what's her name Jen. Uh, but not not from now not, not not outside of the room like like it happened. But I actually uh, push them push her inside again of the room further inside with the uh, the arc cannon. As you can tell there, this is a really good move. It's pretty smart if you can do this as a mastermind. Use multiple of your cameras. As you can tell, there the angle was kind of bad, but if I switch it out of the camera, then the angle is not so bad. So, it's very smart that you play your cameras, right? Very important. You see right there, uh, it's just, it, like I mentioned, if they start shooting with the machine gun like that, you cannot shoot back, so you might as well leave the camera. But uh, the opposite is true if you're shooting them, they cannot shoot the camera if you're constant, constant firing. So I'm trying to focus on the, 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 the survivors that are already low on health, so I can... Possibly uh, down them and uh, build more pressure from there. Now you see right there. The only problem with, I, I I I'm finding with this build is that um, you know s this, sometimes your hands is just filled with syringes, and you you can't really shoot them back. You know with the syringe, so that's a little bit annoying. But at the same time, like I don't really know what to put there besides a quick draw, a quick draw card because there's there's no more guns I can use. You know I'm already using everything <laughs> that can like hit them from long range. <laughs> so you know the build is kind of there's not much you can make better for that scenario besides just using this arrangement really fast to get rid of them to cycle your your hands and and whatnot. But I guess a quick draw could be useful because then you could, you just cycle like multiple syringes at once like that instead of using one by one. So if anything, there's something I could possibly change. But you know, as it is, it isn't that big of an issue. But uh, can be you know uh, on occasion uh, an issue. Right there, she's doing some uh, dodge moves right there, as you can tell. When they move in circles like that, kind of randomly, it's really hard to hit. Cause their, their hitbox is kind of broken, uh, in my opinion. Like it's, it's like their arms doesn't have a hitbox. It's only like their torso that has a hitbox, so it makes it really hard to hit. Especially if they're if they're uh, sideways, like she, she was doing right there. 
kind of annoying, honestly, but hey, <laughs> gotta deal with it, right? So right here, I'm trying to switch my camera. This map in particular is really bad to switch with the R1 and L1, because it's just, you know, it just doesn't follow a very structured order. So you get lost trying to do this sometimes. Because I, I always use the R1 too, because it's way faster to move the camera that way. You see right there, I'm trying again to, with the R1, switch the cameras, but it goes to a, a totally different order with the camera, so it's kind of useless in, in that sense. And I, I have not memorized it yet. It's pretty hard to memorize it as well with the, such a random order like this. Usually, if they follow a structure line, so like the map is like a, a square and it goes like clockwise, you know, the cameras as you press around, then it's easy to follow. But when it's random like this, you know, not very logical in a way, the how the R1, R1 moves the camera from camera is kind of hard to. Some maps are like this. So you see right there, this is a perfect example. This is why I use the syringes. So I can have my, uh, my camera active, as you can see here, at all times. And you see right there, I use the syringe, and now I can use the... It's cheap as well, it only costs one. And eventually I'll get my my uh, shield, as you can tell there. Now, this was so unlucky, like, come on. She used at the perfect moment that I was about to, to use my, my damn card there to stop her from doing the objective, so you increase the cost of the cards. So, I don't know if you can call that luck or whatever, but that was pretty that bad. <laughs> so, right here, um, I was waiting a little bit, because I, I, I was thinking I, I wouldn't be able to kill her. So I guess I kind of waited so I could get Val and her on on the you know on the same shot instead of just firing at the Jew alone. But I could tell I think from the time she would probably finish the the thing there the uh, the objective before I could even down her with the the rocket launcher. So I, I was kind of that's why I hesitated a little bit because I was thinking to myself should I really take the shot right now or not? As as well as because as you can tell they they are smart so they wait before. I'm sorry, they wait after I use my, my invincibility shield to then use the flashbang after, so I have no way to avoid it. So for that reason as well, was another reason why I hesitated a little bit, because I was thinking if, I, if it was really worth taking the shot right there, considering they would probably stun me after. Or if I should just save the... Uh, you know, and like I mentioned, I wouldn't be able to stop the objective. Or if I should just save the... Um, should just save the... Um, the, the invisibility shield for another scenario, another situation. As you can tell right there was another unfortunate moment. I tried to uh, use a gun, but only got uh, syringes in my deck in that particular moment, so it took a little longer to use it. I think she, the Jill is probably using USB, so that's why she's doing the objective so quickly as well. She's probably using at least one USB there, otherwise I would actually be able to stop her there with the gun in time. But I'm pretty sure she, she must be using a USB. Probably not a full USB build, but definitely at least one or, you know, probably using a mixtape or something so she can still use the the rocket launcher more often. But yeah, you can see that two moments where, you know, kind of unlucky, I guess you could say, because I really didn't do anything wrong. It was kind of just unlucky. But um, it could have definitely changed a little bit the, the ongoing of the match if that's, those situations were played out differently. We. <laughs> Now, uh, you see, this, the, the area 3 usually is so bad, for m most maps are so bad, the angles and everything, usually you only have one camera as well, watching the objectives and whatnot. This is kind of a mistake, they're staying together like that, so it kind of gives me, as you can see right there as well, they leave the, they leave the, what's the name, the, the mobilizing around so fast because they're good, so they're just like, <laughs> I'd like breaking the controller to leave that quickly. <laughs> Now this is a bit unlucky as well, like the shots are missing, I'm, I'm not sure why, but hey, that's very unlucky. This map is nice, see the angles are so bad man, like, I don't know. From this far you can still hit them, but, uh, you know, it's a little harder, because like I mentioned, their hitbox is so small, so, it's definitely a little harder than hitting from close. Sensitivity is a little different as well, it, that, you see right there, like I mentioned, she's probably using mixtapes. For the rocket launcher, she can like destroy my camera instantly, and she can still shoot the the core. And uh, because of the map is so bad as well, I only have one camera to watch the objective. So, you know, she she shoots my camera once, and essentially ten seconds of four people shooting the core that I can't do anything about. So you see right there, I use the shield before using the guns to make sure no one else can uh can shoot me while I'm shooting him. If I if I done the opposite, I use the gun first. She would have shot my camera before he was down. You see the spray right there. So that's why one of the things that I mentioned why you cannot rely 
on downing them to be able to to win it needs to be by time because of sprays and things like that just break the pressure you see right there she was actually shooting my camera before i was even on it so that was pretty smart uh kind of forced me to use a uh, nemesis here to stop her otherwise uh you know i would have to wait for the camera and she would probably destroy the, the thing before it came back you see right right there this time i was not using my my invisibility shield because i don't want them to flashbang me after but you know what happened instead is that instead of using the flashbang, they actually used the Martin thing there, the flashbang from Martin, which I can't really react to because it's too quickly. She's right there, she's waiting, reading the, the flashbang again. I immediately just left Nemesis because I don't want to get stunned like that, so I might as well leave him at this point. See what I mentioned again? If you're shooting them, they cannot shoot you back. However, you see right there as well, if I use the, the card, which gives me the shield, it's going to break her from stunning me with the, with the machine gun. So that's the way you can kind of counter that as well. You see, I'm trying to focus. You see, this is so good as well. I don't know if you can tell, but the camera that I, I did, the, the card that I used there was the automatic gun. So she's still shooting him right now as I'm shooting him with this camera. And he doesn't die. Like, I mean, come on, die, die. And he won't fucking die. Taking shots from everywhere. But uh, there you go. See again the spray one more time. Uh, kind of breaking the, <laughs> the game. <laughs> There's like nothing I can do because, you know, there's no counter to sprays. You see right there again, uh, sometimes like how there's too many syringes in your hand. It's super useful, but as sometimes it can be a little bit of a problem. You, you can tell it's still working pretty well. You see right there, the syringe just saved my camera. Uh, I don't, the only problem, I, I, I honestly feel like the syringe is not really that big of a deal. It's just this automatic card is a little bad. Because it's so expensive, I cost 5 and you know it's so dumb as well. The, the AI for the cameras, you know, you can get shot down easily. So... You see, right there, it was very good that she destroyed my camera there, because I was about to use my, my automatic, and it would um, would you would have done a lot of damage. And you see, right there, they're they're pretty much on overtime right now. And this is another problem with the game that I think the devs should fix. You should not get gain 50 seconds back when you revive someone. They should. It's essentially 50 seconds lost if you go down. You should get punished for it. You know, you shouldn't be able to recover like that. And you can tell just because of this, the fact that they gained 15 seconds even though they went down for reviving each other, it completely causes them to open the door now instead of running out of time. Which I think is like a, another point of like great unbalance in the game is the fact that you can down them and they still get gained the time back for healing back up. Which I, I which like I just showed you is very easy, easily broken and easy to do because they have infinite sprays and Val can use their thing right there. It's, it's you know, it shouldn't, they shouldn't gain 15 seconds if, if it's the, this easy to uh, revive them again, you know? And uh, you can tell right there as well. I couldn't do much at that point, but uh, yeah, it was mostly you know some. You, you can tell how how these little differences in the balance that I'm mentioning <laughs> makes <laughs> the whole difference in a game. It can make the whole difference in a game. <laughs> but you can tell it was a little unlucky on the area too as well with the. <laughs> so right here, I'm telling them that uh, I was getting the bad cards at the bad time, the worst moments. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you can tell it was a good match, right? If, if only those little details were different, I would have won easily, you know? So it was definitely a, you know, a balanced match in a way, but you can tell there it was it was due to unbalanced things that they actually won, you know? So, yeah, but that's the video, guys. Um, that was definitely a good match. I, I definitely could have won there if only a couple of things were different. So I don't think the build is a problem at all. This build is definitely strong to, to play at this level. So that's the video. See you guys on the next one. Take care.